was a it was such a great moment. You know, um, every time it feels so so epic. And I knew this was a you know this was a, a big fight for me. Every fight I feel we just get you know bigger, more high pressure, more at stake. You know, I know I'm getting you know real close to that UFC call now, so I know each fight is is pivotal and and so important now. So you know this one this one felt a bit extra special. First of all, introducing our challenger. Out of the corner. He's gonna step in and he does it all over. Let's bring on the boo! This is Eternal MMA. Alright everybody, welcome back and thank you for joining me here once again on the Eternal Insiders Podcast. We are being joined today by the reigning Eternal Lightweight Champion who defended his belt for the second time at Eternal 82, that massive 3,600-strong sold-out crowd at the HBF Stadium in Perth, Western Australia, his backyard, coincidentally. Quill and Soulkilled make a bit of a habit of coming on the show here, mate. We've had you on quite a few times, so thank you for joining me here for uh, what seems like about the 100th time, but always a pleasure having you here, man. Uh, how are you? How are you enjoying the win? How's the last sort of week and a half been for you, brother? Hey, Luke. Um, yeah, it's been... Yeah, the last week's been been good. Just been, you know, relaxing, taking it... You know, taking in the the win, um, yeah, got back into training, just trying to get back into regular, you know, schedule now because I've been a, uh, you know, a bit out of whack. So it's uh, about time I get, you know, stuck back into work. <laughs> I mean, you say that. I mean, it seems like there's not even any rest of the champions, man. I mean, according to uh, some reliable sources, you were straight back in the gym what the day after, helping teammates back <laughs> into training. Like, so you didn't sort of get to take any time off whatsoever. Yeah, not really. Like, uh, you know, I like to get stuck straight back into it depending on how you know my fights go like you know i was fortunate enough after this one to pull up with no injuries so i could get you know straight back in yeah, so how was it coming in i mean you just said pulling up with no injuries uh how did you sort of feel coming in in terms of it came with a clean bill of health and everything like not sort of too much bothering you there no nope, i yeah i've come into this fight you know 100 percent healthy and yeah and then i also left the fight 100 percent healthy as well so it was a uh, you know very very good Good to hear, man. Did you get to at least, I know you were back into training pretty much sort of from the following day, but did you get to sort of, you know, at least enjoy the win? You know, the sort of that night, obviously, you know, it's a, it's a home game for you in Perth. So did you get to at least yeah. sort of spend a time, bit of time with friends and family and at least to sort of drink that win in a bit? Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. You know, the uh, Sunday, Monday afterwards, I, um, you know, I enjoyed myself. And then, then yeah, Tuesday, I was, you know, back home and, you know, trying to get stuck back into things. No rest of the wicked, brother. I mean, just uh, I want to talk a little about this fight coming in. I mean, the times that I talked to you ahead of, you know, your last couple of fights, you said before the Donnelly fight in terms of the feeling of that one that you were shitting yourself in your words coming in for that yeah. one, but then in the Pastor fight, uh, you felt completely relaxed coming in for that Pastor fight. You know, maybe just a bit of a change in mentality or something for yourself, a bit of a shift there. How are you feeling coming in for this fight, I guess, compared to those other two fights? Because there was a stark contrast between those two. Yeah, I felt, you know, very similar to the last one. Like I felt really, really relaxed. And I find now that I'm actually, you know, really enjoying the process. And I'm actually, you know, when I'm walking out, when I'm actually, you know, in the cage, I'm actually like really excited to actually get things started. And I'm actually having fun. You know, that's the biggest thing now. Like when I'm competing, I'm actually having a lot more fun now rather than just, than just, uh, how do I say, just kind of just, Focusing purely on just like have to get this win, have to get this win. Now I'm actually, you know, taking things in more and really enjoying myself now. Do you, is there anything that you can sort of point to that you think there's a sort of a reason for that? Do you think it's just because, you know, you've had a few fights now, you've had a lot of experience? Is it just sort of like, is it an age type thing? Like do you just sort of feel like, you know, there's a, a kind of a pinpoint reason you can sort of point to for you kind of getting that bit more comfortable? I think so. I think. I think that um, the Donnelly fight was just such a like a big moment for me in my career. Like it was, and uh, yeah, it was just such a, a big pivotal moment. And you know, getting through that now, everything seems kind of easy in that, in that um, you know, in saying that. So I think just just experience. I like it. Now, for this one, I can't remember what you've come out to in the past in terms of your walkout songs, man, but, I mean, that yeah. entrance into the HBF Stadium for Metallica coming in for this yeah. one, that was electric, man. Was this your choice? Like, I loved it. Like, goosebumps, man, yeah. from this end. Yeah, that was my choice, and I was, you know, very happy with my decision. It was, yeah, it was, it felt really epic. 
I mean, what did that sort of feel like in terms of the crowd? I mean, we, we always talk about, you know, you fighting in front of the HBF, you know, your hometown, your fans and that sort of thing. But, I mean, sometimes, you know, uh, fighters and everything talk about a bit of that adrenaline dump you can sometimes get before a fight, you know, amping yourself up. Do you feel any of that when you come out and you've sort of got everything rocking like that? Not really. Like, I find I, yeah, I, I take it in, but at the same time, I'm I'm still pretty, you know, calm and composed. Like, it's... um. Yeah, but I do. I do love hearing hearing the pop for me. It's uh, yeah, it's such a such a great thing. No, it seems very cool from our end too, man. I mean, watching it even on USC Fire Pass, man, it's electric. As soon as the song came, like, whoo, this is uh, this is a good one. I'm very excited for that. So it just pumps us up even more for the fight, right? So I can only imagine what it's like from your end. Speaking of the fight, yeah. we said let's have a chat about that. Um, you know, the first round, obviously, Dom goes in pretty early on you and gets that takedown pretty much straight away. I mean, if we look at Dom. You know, there's no secret on him as far as where he likes to take the fight, as far as where his strengths are. You know, that would be the sort of the ground game for Dom. Was that what you were sort of expecting at least that early? I'm sure you expect him to grapple at some point, but was that something you'd factored in when preparing for him that he might want to go in on you that early? Yeah, I was, I was expecting him to come out with a, you know, fast and hard <laughs> grappling heavy approach. You know, I, I kind of expected him to come out a bit more harder on the feet. Usually he, he comes out and he throws... He's quite aggressive with the strikes first for a little bit for like a couple of exchanges and then he tends to shoot him. But this one was pretty much the the first exchange and yeah, he got in, you know, tight around my waist and yeah, he got a, got a solid takedown in. There was nothing really I could, um, I could do or it was too late before I could do anything. I was already on the, on the map and uh, yeah, he did, he did good controlling me for the first, you know, three and a half, four minutes of the fight. I was, yeah, I was trying to, you know, wait for my moment to really explode and get up. And, uh, you know, after a few minutes, that wasn't really coming. So I had to, you know, I had to start to get a bit more, you know, desperate, a bit more hustle to get back up. And then the opportunity came for that for that uh, triangle that I, I almost finished. I didn't really expect to, <laughs> expect to get it that tight. I was kind of just using it to try to, you know, cause a scramble and maybe get up on top, which ultimately ended up doing, got the top position from that. I was going to ask you about that in terms of that triangle being stuck mm-hmm. in. I mean, like, yeah, how deep did that feel once it, was, uh, once it was sort of locked on there? Did you feel like that was maybe the end of the fight? I know it ended up being sort of a scramble to you to a different position, but, yeah. like, how deep did that feel? Were you, were you hearing him sort of gurgle a little bit or anything like that? Like, talk us through that sort of moment. Yeah, it was – when I locked it in, it did feel really tight. And um, there was a moment where I thought it might be finished, but hands up pulling his head out just a little bit and then uh my my like hamstring wasn't like directly on his neck it was a bit more higher up like maybe just behind the ear so there was still like a little bit of space and then when he got his leg over the top i knew he was out so then it was just scrambled to win the top position and then uh and then yeah that's it from there I mean, if we look through, you know, your last few fights, I mean, we're, we're sort of getting a lot more used to seeing you dominating a lot of positions or getting early knockouts or, you know, your last title defense, I mean, you pretty much dominated all the scrambles and not sort of spending a lot of time on the bottom. In terms of those sort of few minutes, you know, with, with Dom sort of controlling from the top and everything, did you notice there was sort of any difference to you in terms, of like, say, from your first pro fight, for example, uh, you know, and, and dealing with that sort of situation, did you feel a bit more calm in those sort of moments that you'd be able to, you know, get yourself back into a good position? And everything, say, compared to what it was like in your early part of your career. Yeah, for sure. I was, you know, I was calm the whole time. You know, I knew there was five rounds to work. I was in no rush, especially that early in the fight. I didn't want to do anything high risk to, um, you know, to allow Dom to settle like an even better position. So I didn't really want to like, you know, turn all the way over and expose my back, especially when we're dry and sticky. Mm. Having Dom on my back when we're, you know, you know, dry would have been a would have been a, a mission to to get him off. Maybe later on in the fight when we're a bit more slippery, I could um I'd you know take that risk and it would be easier to, you know, to to transition from there. But uh, yeah, that early in the fight, I'll just waiting for my moment to, to explode without doing anything, you know, too risky that early. How close do you think the rear naked choke was in the first round once you sort of transition, you know, to that position? Did that sort of feel like another big opportunity or is that sort of more grinding the round out? What was uh, what was your feeling there? Yeah, there was a moment where I thought he was, um, you know, I might be able to finish it, but, you know, he tucked his chin and did the right things. And then, yeah. It was just, it was all in a matter of like a split second where I thought I might have this and then it was, yeah, then I knew it wasn't on, so. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, everything changed. I mean, in the second round, obviously completely took over. I mean, you know, you had that right kick to left hand combination to his head, which led to the takedown. And that was pretty much all sort of, I wouldn't say cruise control, but it, I mean, it was you, you know, dominating everything on the ground sort of from, uh, you know, from that point to the rest of the fight until the fight's conclusion. You know, as that sort of fight kind of went on and you were controlling everything in terms of the grappling exchanges, what were you sort of feeling in terms of, you know, how much you were dominating that? Did you feel like you were starting to wilt Dom in those sort of positions and that, you know, because, I mean, his, his game is sort of the ground and everything. Did it feel like you were starting to break him a little bit there towards the end before you ultimately got the finish? I think so. I think it. Um, I think the moment where I reversed the position in the first round, and then I come out and then got the takedown after landing, you know, a nice combo on the feet. I think that that you know, that, you know, that uh, wore on him a bit. Um, and uh, yeah, I just felt there wasn't as much like hustle in him to get up. Like I was on top, and he was just it was just like hand fighting, and there wasn't really much like you know him bumping and exploding trying to trying to get back up to the feet or trying to like reverse the position it was more just yeah he's more just standing still and just like it's like he was just trying to trying to survive and just trying to hand fight to stay safe yeah i mean like we said i mean you know he obviously had you know the better part of the first round and everything so i was just curious like did you feel like maybe there was a little bit of you know maybe dejection from his part that he wasn't able to take advantage i guess of that first round because you know he went obviously in that takedown straight away Maybe there was an element hoping that he potentially sort of finish it early, but you know, ultimately for himself, not able to get it done. Did you feel like maybe mentally, you know, not saying that would have broken him or anything like that, but you know, I'm guessing from you know how hard he sort of went in the first round, he wasn't obviously hoping or expecting you to sort of see that second round and sort of take over. Yeah, I think so. I think it. Um, yeah, I think it would have you know hurt hard a bit, dominating someone kind of like positionally for a, you know for a while and then having them, you know, jump the gun and turn the tables and then have them really dominate you back in return would, uh, yeah, I reckon that that broke the heart a little. Uh, immediate feelings after finishing the fight, ultimately sinking in, you know, the rear naked choke and getting the win. What, what did that sort of feel like? You're a bit of a veteran in terms of getting a win in front of the uh, HBF Stadium crowd now, obviously Perth, your hometown and everything. How did this one feel in terms of the win compared to the rest? Damn, that was, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was such a great moment, you know, um, Every time it feels so, so epic. And I knew this was a, you know, this was a, a big fight for me. Every fight I feel it just gets, you know, bigger, more high pressure, more at stake. You know, I know I'm getting you know, real close to that UFC call now. So I know each fight is, is pivotal and, and so important now. So, you know, this one, this one felt a bit extra special. Yeah, talking about obviously the UFC, this isn't, you know, you're, this would be the first time that you've been obviously on the UFC radars because you had the road to the UFC fight that you were sort of supposed to get on. So I guess, you know, obviously in your mind, you know, you know they've already sort of got their eye on you. But are you treating sort of each fight as it comes as, you know, just another opportunity to really kind of show off everything you're capable of? I mean, we talked about this on the podcast the other week. If you ask me, you know, in terms of my opinion, I mean, you pretty much got the perfect, like, you know, like videotape to send in, right? Because you've done everything. You've got the submission wins, you've got the early knockout wins, you know, the Brett Pastor win got to, you know, show what you can do across sort of five rounds, you know, and, and dominate a fight sort of bell to bell across a title fight range of five rounds. And then also in this fight, you know, deal with a little bit of that early adversity, but still come out of that and, you know, get on the other side and still get a, a highlight reel win. Are you thinking like highlight reel wins for every fight so you can quickly gain, you know, more of that attention from the UFC? Yeah, you know, each fight is, uh, is, is pretty much building building my resume. You know, so each fight is, uh, you know, pretty much like a, a small part of a of a job interview. You know, you gotta you gotta make the UFC want to have you, want to sign you. You know, because they, obviously they don't they don't have to sign you, and you know, pay you money to fight for them. You know, you gotta make them, you know, really want want you in their in their promotion. So each fight, I don't really think too much about getting the like the finish now. Like I think when I fought. Like uh, Pastore, I was, you know, I was going into that fight like, yep, got to finish this guy quickly, and then um, and then they went to decision, and then I remember fighting guys thinking that, yep, we're going to go the distance is going to be like a hard fight, and then I finish it quickly. So it's a bit of like reverse psychology there. So I try not to think about it now. Uh, the wins are, I guess, what's sort of the most important thing, man. But I mean, if my money in that Pastore fight, I mean, I'm glad it went sort of the five rounds because it was yeah. very cool to sort of see what you can do you know, just without taking your foot off the gas one moment. 
And I mean, chaining everything together, every scramble, you know, on the ground and everything and just showing like how high level you are. Like, I think like everybody who knows you knows how well-rounded you are in terms of you're not just a knockout artist or just a submission artist or anything like that, you know, but you can wrestle and you can sort of grind with these guys that, you know, at least come in advertised like, you know, high-end wrestlers and that sort of thing. So to be able to see that complete part of your game, you know, in terms of advertising who you are as a fighter, I think is absolutely fantastic. I mean, you're, you're talking about obviously wanting to be on the UFC's radar and potentially get signed by them. Can we assume that the, uh, the scribing on the hand after the fight, that was a bit yeah. of a, hey, maybe it's time to <laughs> sign me? Is that what we were going with there? Yeah, that's what I was calling for. You know, I'm, I know I'm ready now. I, I'm ready for the, for the call up, whether that be contender series or straight, straight in. Um, I'm, I'm ready for that next step and for, for that level. I mean, there's rumors sort of circulating around I'm only very recently in terms of cards potentially coming over here and there's a few sort of like, oh, it's apparently going to be in Perth and that sort of thing, maybe in June or something like that. Uh, look, I don't know if anything's confirmed and maybe you know something I don't. You don't necessarily have to share, but I imagine if those rumors are kind of floating around, there might be a card coming over here later in the year. That'd be something you potentially have your eye on. Oh, yeah. Making making a UFC debut in Perth oh. you know, at home, that'd be, a, that'd be a dream come true, man. Were you at the last Perth card that, that came over for Volkswagen for Islam? Yeah, yeah, I was. That yeah. was insane, man. That, like was, that, that was, was, I never was, felt was. anything like that in my life as yeah. far as being, I've been to a few USC cards. That was like Melbourne, Sydney, everything. Like Perth, that was where I was fucking at. That was like... Yeah, that was that was special, that, that fight night. That was massive, man, yeah. yeah. So I imagine you'll definitely want to feel that for yourself, but, you know, be it the Contender yeah. Series or here, I mean, you know, looking forward to seeing, you know, if and when, because it's only a matter of time for your brother. I mean, you, you've certainly That's shown it. enough here, so... And we enjoy watching your fight every time, of course, and uh, seeing the next level. That's something we're very much looking forward to. Just want to ask you, you know, just one more quick thing, man, in terms of a, a bit of sort of perspective on the fight. I mean, this was two guys coming in. You know, we talked about this a lot ahead of the fight, about two young guys, like, really just sort of coming in, barely scratching the primes of their careers. But as far as, you know, your guys' age and how good you are, coming back in for a rematch, like, in terms of this level, you know, pretty close to a sort of higher level as it kind of gets seeing Dom in the cage and everything and you know, how disappointed he sort of was because he was so sure he was coming in to get that win. Kind of reminiscent of your first fight as a pro, how you sort of reacted in that moment as well. I don't think I've ever seen anyone so dejected and so deflated after a fight as what I originally saw you from your first sort of pro fight loss, you know, the hands and the head pacing about the cage, you know, your coaches and all that sort of thing consoling you. Is there a part of you that sort of sees a bit of that and understands that, you know, from Dom's perspective? And, and can you recall the emotions of losing uh, that first fight and kind of what you felt in that moment? Yeah, I did, um, you know, feel a little bit of that, um, you know, for him. You know, I know that it's just, that's just the feeling of disappointment, you know, like all the hard work and, you know, didn't, didn't pay off. You know, you can, you can work as hard as you want and in the moment you still, you know, is still, you know, you still got to perform on the night. That's what it all boils down to, is uh, yeah, performing on the night. And when you, you know, when you don't do that, it's just you just feel utter disappointment. So um, yeah, definitely, you know, felt for him in that moment. But you know, that's the game. You know, the game is one man's triumph and uh, another man's humiliation. So that's just that's just the sport. I mean, if you recall back to feeling that yourself, I mean, yeah, I'm sure every fighter feels, you know, at least that level of disappointment and maybe they sort of don't show it as much. But uh, do you recall, like, why you sort of took that so hard as to why you took that in your first pro? Like, was it a matter of you were so sure you were coming in for this win? You know, and obviously you've gone on to win sort of ever since. Like, you know, do you remember sort of that feeling from that first one you had? Yeah, it was just, you know, I put a lot of pressure on myself. You know, I've, I've, got, um, I've got high hopes on myself. So, uh, you know, coming up short, you know, really, really hits hard, especially being the first one, you know, I'd, uh, pretty much everyone, got, I felt like everyone got a head start, you know, I started off 0-1 and then, uh, you know, I felt like I was, you know, a bit behind, but now, you know, I just, I think now it makes for a better, you know, a better, you know, resume or a better story, you know, start off on a loss and then going on this crazy run now, it's a bit like a, bit like Jack Della's run. I'm, I feel like I'm going to have the very similar. When, when you sort of look back, because I went back and watched that last fight, and I remember like looking up on UFC Fight Pass and going to it. Do you remember this man from like the original fight? This looks, <laughs> this looks nothing <laughs> like you, bro. Who like is that? I did not know. Uh, legit, I, I almost messaged that? Cam and was like, 
Because every now and again, like once a blue moon, like something's gone wrong in terms of, you know, the the, the art for the advertisement for it or something like that. The wrong fighter on there. I legit did not know it was you. I, I didn't. And I was like, yeah. holy shit. No, it actually is. But I that think isn't, it's, you know, we, we got a bit bigger, <laughs> the mustaches there and that sort of thing. Like yeah. you, you look like a different guy, man. I mean, the skills have yeah. evolved. Everything's evolved. You physically evolved. Like there's so much has changed in a short amount of time for you. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Overall maturity. Overall maturity and the power of the mustache, brother. The mustache the remains mustache undefeated, man, baby. The, the Let's go. The mustache monster. The mustache. The maniac, mustache right? monster. Or the mania. What ended up winning <laughs> on that poll? Did we end up going monster or mania? I, the, the monster, I think, won. Just the monster it was, it won. Was pretty neck and neck. It was like forty nine percent, fifty one percent. The mustache monster wins. <laughs> the mustache monster wins, man. I mean, either way, both fantastic. I mean, you know, just you talk about potentially going forward, you know, we, as far as like a, a Jack Matter, Jack Della Maddalena type storyline, I mean, getting that sort of first loss and then going on the epic streak that you've had, man. Like we said, showing off every single facet of your game up until this point, the early knockouts, the submissions, you know, dominating bell to bell across five rounds and everything, man. I mean, I think it's set you up absolutely perfectly in prime position to potentially go to that next leap. And we'll see what happens. Not too sure if we do see you here if I have, you know, fight again in this country. You know, like, obviously, we love having you on Eternally Time. Yeah. But, I mean, we'll always be rooting for your brother, whatever that next step is. And uh, if that's Contender Series, if it's UFC, if it's back here, uh, you know, can't wait to see you back in the cage uh, once again. And uh, hopefully have you back on the show again in the future talking about uh, whatever your next potential win might be. Yeah, of course. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Luke. Thanks for having me on, man. Always a pleasure, brother. Thank you.